I knew a long time ago when I was a child that I would have to get out of Chicago. Chicago just felt too small to me. The trend was that all the musicians moved to New York eventually. So I saw that and in 19, oh maybe 1954, I had a chance to come and visit New York and stay with some cousins who were right here in Harlem, you know, on Edgecombe Avenue. And I said, I think I, this is gonna work. During the loft era when a lot of people had these lofts, mine was part of the garment district, you know, it was like a sweatshop and somebody had it before me and when I got it, it was like $95 a month. This was a space that had a drum set and a bass amp, you know, and, and, and we were just lucky to get that space in 1967. That was 10 years after I had been here. We had another studio that was a fire floor walk-up, so <laughs> there wasn't too much carrying heavy stuff up and down. But, I mean, Max Roach was rehearsing there, Ken McIntyre was rehearsing there, Persip was teaching and rehearsing there. But we made these places so attractive that a wealthier class of people came in and raised the financial level to the point where you couldn't afford it. You, I mean, I've seen it happen to the Lower East Side, to Greenwich Village, to Williamsburg now. You know, it, it's an evolving thing. The artists come in and gentrify a place um, culturally. And then the developmental gentrification comes in and puts it out of that people's price range, you know. So it, it's what we're, you know, that's a bad thing about New York is that the, the competition is so, so hard, you know. You can't relax here. Bill Cole and I met at a conference at the University of Pittsburgh around 1971. I was, I was maybe in my third year of teaching on the college level, and um, I had a chance to go to different, you know, um, seminars and conventions that they had. And this one was conducted by Nathan Davis. Max Roach was there, and Max and I had just begun interacting with the whole Oom Boom project. Bill Cole was there at this convention, and we met and we talked, and a few years later, he was studying at Wesleyan University, working on his postgraduate degrees, you know, which led to a doctorate. And then he got a job teaching in uh, Amherst College in Amherst, Massachusetts. So Sam Rivers and Vishnu Woods and I went up there to do a concert with him. And this began a series of concerts that he did, which continued through Dartmouth University. And I participated in every one of them, maybe about eight or 10 years. And then he moved on to Syracuse University and whatnot. He's worked in my groups, you know, with the Composers Workshop Ensemble. We've done, when I had my studio, we did performances there that involved a bunch of other people. Joe Daly, incidentally, was also involved in a lot of these projects. It just never, never finished. You know, we're, we're still doing it. What is that, 71? That's, that's like 40, 45 years of, of performance history. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
challenge is in the music itself. You know, the, the, the challenge is there because the music is unusual and innovative and, and it might call for you to do things that a lot of other composers wouldn't challenge you to do. You know, so for that reason, you know, it, it's, and it's also interesting because of that. You know, you, you, you know, when you're pulled into doing something that you wouldn't do naturally and you make something out of it, then that expands your whole palette for expression later on. I've been here, well, okay, 2007 was 50 years. So now it's 55 years. And, um, but I mean, you know, the, the breadth of uh, experience is, is, is very important because I, I worked with people like Janis Joplin. You know, I, I was her musical director. I, I worked with Melvin Van Peebles, the first couple of projects he did in New York because we were old childhood friends, you know. And to mingle that with all these other things from anything from classical music to wildly abstract, I think enables me to be able to improvise without thinking, you know, because you have so many different sources to draw from. You know, from, from everything from, I did a country western show, the, the Jimmy Dean show for three years on television. And I mean, it was very enlightening because you saw how these guys from Memphis did their stuff. And I got into Broadway shows, like the West Side Story. You know, that, that, that was the first Broadway show I ever did. So that was like starting at the top and working your way back down, you know. <laughs>